Hey, this is Joe with Joe Lee Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you all so much for subscribing, your comments, and your thumbs up. We really appreciate it very much. So I'm here today with my good friend, Aura. Aura, thank you for coming. Thank you, Joe, for the invitation. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> so, so many of you have been asking about rentals in Vilcabamba in the area. And, and you will have all these questions about rental properties and apartments and things like that. Aura is the person that is going to handle all that for you. She's in the business of helping people find rentals. So now you can pick on Aura every time you have a question. Don't ask me because I'm stupid. I don't know. <laughs> well, Aura, I want to ask a few questions. Where were you born? Uh, I'm born, I was born here in Vilcabamba, so I'm a native. All my family uh, is from Vilcabamba, <laughs> so we Fantastic. are nativos. <laughs> so Ada's whole family is friends of ours. I mean, her husband, uh, Pau, super sweet guy, and uh, kind of tall for an Ecuadorian, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah he has He's a good size. Same height <laughs> and, and then her little brother, Jose, and um, he works for us sometimes, and her father's been up here, and they're just wonderful, sweet people, all of them. <laughs> Thank you. We love this family. So um, really great family to get to know and uh, a lot of uh, helpful things. And Aura does uh, rentals for people and help people find different houses. She knows a lot about this. So I wanted to ask you, um, and this is, I'm just kind of going down a list of questions I have from yes. people from the channel. Um, what can they expect? What typically comes in the price of a rental when they rent an apartment? Let's just say the apartment says, Four hundred dollars a month. What do they get for that usually? It's normal to get uh, utilities included. So most of the landlords um, like to include the utilities, so you don't have to worry about paying internet, electricity, or or water. So it's much better when you find this kind of deal included in the in the price. So that's basically what you get, and also. Um, Furnished. You can find a good apartment furnished with uh, four hundred dollars, and it's it's normal that landlords will ask you uh, for a deposit, also. So that's okay. And how much is the deposit typically? Uh, it's another four hundred. It's the same amount for the um, like the first month of uh, rent. So you pay. You get to pay the first month rent. It's four hundred, let's say, and plus four hundred for the deposit. So. Um and, uh, and let me just stop here a second, back up. Um, so, you know, one of the things that we had here when we built our little casita um, is that we could just hook it up to our existing utilities, our water, et cetera, or we could have put in a separate meter and had the water metered separately. So we didn't want to do that because the meter is really expensive. Yes. Like, you know, $4,500 or something like that, really bad. So it was better for us just to hook it up to our existing lines. And so that's why it's all included in the price. Um, it's much simpler. Water's so cheap, it's, you know, 4 or $5 yeah. a month. So it's much easier just to hook it up to the existing services that are there. And the um, propane tanks here, I've mentioned in the past, $3 for a propane tank. It'll last a whole month. And uh, electricity, yes. you know, again, we're all on the same meter yeah. because having a separate meter is very expensive. Yeah, that's right. So it's easier just to put it all on the same meter. See, si. yeah, yeah. And also about the gas, the propane, uh, that's something that uh, tenants would actually pay because when you get the house, they would give you the propane there, but after you get, um, you run out, you will have to refill it. But that's very easy yeah. to do. It's yeah, two fifty, three dollars, yeah. uh, depending on where you buy it in town. And, exactly, I $2, mean, three dollars. Uh, we we have a lady we like to go to. She's a sweetheart, and we always give her three oh, bucks because yes. we like Juanita. Oh, okay. <laughs> Juanita Edwin's mom. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, in the four hundred deposit, let's just say, I mean, this is just a number we're using. Yes. Um, but when they give you the deposit, um, and so the landlord keeps that until you move out. Yes, that's like a warranty they, they keep until you move. So um, the main idea is that uh, when they give you the house, it's all in good conditions. And when you leave the place, you have to deliver the same, the same way you got it. So, for example, if there are some maintenance with the paint or if something's scratched or broken, 
uh, they would keep part of your warranty to give all the maintenance they need, unless you do everything. But it's, it's fair to do that. Uh, in most of the cases, landlords will give you um, the full amount because you deliver the house nicely like you got it. But otherwise, it's like between agreement from landlord and tenant. She or he would say, okay, I'm gonna keep $50 because I need to buy paint, I need to pay somebody to paint the house and to make the cleaning. It's, a, it's an example. It can be more also, but you know it's between agreement. So it's not fair that it, a landlord would say, I'm gonna keep everything because I need to do. That thing yeah. doesn't really happen, but you know, you have to be in agreement. <laughs> Well, we, you know, I, I had somebody respond on the channel one time about, um, and it's the only person I've ever heard respond this way, but they said, oh, the landlords in Bill Kabamba are terrible and they keep your deposit and they won't fix anything. They're just horrible. Blah, blah, blah. Have you heard anything like that? I, I actually have heard people saying that, but I don't think it's 100%, um, you know, true. Because I know uh, my family do rentals. They have uh, little houses. My uncle has a house. My aunt has like two houses. And sometimes I help them take clients. And we have never had you know, problems or complaints because we try to do the fair thing for them. And it's also good that uh, they deliver things clean. But we do say, hey, okay, um, can you please help us with the cleaning? And they say, no, can you clean? Just keep you know, the fee for cleaning. You know, So it's... It's something that we need to to be clear with the tenant. And yeah, we haven't had these cases, like we always give back the deposit, that's the fair thing to do. But it's also fair that they give the house in good conditions, give back the house in good conditions. So I heard once uh, somebody was complaining that the landlords kept all the deposit, but you know, he had, maybe he should have his reasons why he did that <laughs> maybe be. yeah so yeah but it's not like don't get it don't be afraid that all landlords would keep your deposit that's not true <laughs> and i think you know the people that you're going to to take people to see are going to be not those landlords with that kind of reputation exactly i always be very i always be very careful because i always you know being from the area i get to know people and i know you know, I feel their, their energies and I, I, I know reputations and things like that. So I really I bother these kind of things because I don't want to have problems with tenants. I don't want to have problems with landlords. So yeah. it's good to know the people you are dealing with. <laughs> yeah, good clients, yeah. good landlords, <laughs> yes. great pair ups. Yeah. So is it typical that uh, they would sign a lease? Yes, this is it's typical and the right thing to to, to proceed because uh, you will feel much safer with the contract and make sure that in the contract all the specifications are clear like utilities are included, internet is included, uh, how much you're going to pay per, per month and any observation, we should be sure that it's in, in the contract. And how long the lease is for? And Most of the times I know that landlords they want to have like six months, a period of six months uh, term in the contract and up to one year. Sometimes there are clients, I know I have heard them just looking for three months, but uh, landlords actually don't want to do it for three months. They really mm -hmm. expect like a little longer, like six months minimum. So sometimes it's difficult to find the right place for just three months. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Yeah. We're, we're a little bit of exception to that rule here. We, we like to have people month to month for the first month or two, just to make sure it's going to work out between, you know, between the two of us. And then if everyone's happy, then let's, then let's sign a six month or yeah, one that's, year. That's a really but, good thing But we also. can do that, yeah. yeah. But I will say, you know, the laws are really different here in Ecuador than what we're used to in North America. So, um, for, for example, are all the leases, do they have to be notarized or? Uh, some of the landlords like to do that, but it will be on their own. They would do it. Uh, Tenants won't be paying for it. Oh, so the landlord yeah, would pay for that. Yes, because... That's quite expensive. Notaries are very expensive. Yeah, right? I think it'll be between $70 or about yeah. that, I think. And so. the nearest notaries in Malacato's Dr. Uh, yes. What's his name, Dr. 
I forget his name. Uh, Malakasar. I know him well. Yeah, I, I know him too. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the nearest notice. So you do have to go to Malakados to notarize. Um, notaries here c carry much more weight than an attorney does. Um, uh, they're all doctors. They're all PhDs. Yes. Yeah, that's so, right. Um, yeah, so, you know, if, if they'll pay to have it notarized, that's always a good thing. But can you not notarize and have it filed in Vilcabamba? Or, uh, at the city, or city. I heard something about that. Um, well, I think they can notarize it uh, after any time. It's okay. okay. It doesn't need to be just at the beginning when they sign. It can happen later also. Um, but you have to notarize in Malagatos. There is a fiscalia here in Milkabama where you can the file fiscalia, reports. Yeah. yeah, but they would probably want it notarized to proceed any. Before they do anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's best to get it notarized. And just make sure you get a copy of everything that you sign. Exactly. Get a copy of the contract. And um, some landlords might want you to pay for the notarized, but uh, in it's it's OK. It's between agreement. It's But I think uh, from my point of view, it would be something that the landlord need to provide. So. And in most of the cases, it's okay if it's not notarized. It's okay too. It's still a legal yeah. binding document. Yes. Uh, so, um, and just so you know, when you go to the notary in Malacatos, if if you don't speak Spanish, um, he may require an an interpreter. And so, if Aura is there, it's no problem. She can interpret. Um, we actually had to hire the first time we went to see that notary. He's like. Oh, don't tell anybody you don't speak Spanish. You speak good Spanish, you know, don't worry about it. Okay. And then the next time you made us hire an interpreter. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it was 15 bucks. It wasn't a big deal, but, you know, um, so yeah. So, but expect yes. that you're going to have to have an interpreter. Yeah. They, and they normally ask for, um, how do you say, when you have a license to be an interpreter. They don't want uh, just anybody. Just to, anybody to coming go in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's real good. He knows us pretty well now, and he knows we can read Spanish and we understand it well enough that he's now he's all good with it. Yes, but he just wants to be sure that you know there's some things that happen here, like um, uh, people will sign uh, power of attorney, and they don't really know what they're signing, and exactly. then they wind up in trouble because they have a person who is going to take advantage of that. So he wants to be sure that you understand what you're signing. And that's a sign of a good notary. It's yeah, it's it's good. Uh, all notaries actually request f for interpreter uh, ah. if you don't speak uh, the language. Ah, very good. Yeah, so it's it's good. Okay, um, so the next question I have on my list um, in the Vilcabamba area, what barrios barrios are neighborhoods? Uh, so what barrios would you suggest for expats coming here if they want to rent an apartment? or a house, I mean, it's... It's always good to be not that far from the center. Uh, maybe 15 minute uh, walk, you know, a walk distance. So, El Atillo, it's a good um, area, or around the Atillo, which is maybe seven minutes walk. Also, Yamburara. Yamburara is the neighborhood where I live in. It's very safe, very nice, and there are a lot of expats living there, and it, you know, it seems they enjoy the area. So Yamburara is one of the um, good areas for you to live in. Also um, in town, San Francisco, it's a little neighborhood in the area. Cucanamabajo, it's also another good spot. San Jose. San Jose also is another good spot. Yeah. But you know, if you go farther, you can go to Yamburara Alto, which would be like 40 minute walk. Uh, yeah. You can also go to Hacienda San Joaquin, which is a very nice area, gated community. I really like the area, but also it's another 40-minute walk. Or yeah, we're minute. talking about a $5 taxi ride yes. each way uh, exactly. to some of those further neighborhoods. Well, the, the closer you get to the square, the more noise you're going to have. Um, but walkable, you know, cabs are cheaper, um, really buck fifty when you live in most of the neighborhoods you talked about. You know, not a lot. No, it's a dollar fifty, one fifty, two dollars, maybe seven minute taxi drive or 
yeah, but it's nice to walk. 15 minutes, don't go like farther than maybe a 15 minute walk or 20 minute walk if you want to be close Unless to town. Unless you just like doing it. Yes, yeah. exactly. Where we're at here, people ask, is it, you know, is it, can you walk to town? Well, um, we have. Lisa and I both have walked down the trail before the- Oh really, it's a yeah. nice trail, right? And it's about 40 minute walk uh, downhill and your shins will hurt the first time okay. you do it because you're bracing yourself oh. all the way down. The walk back up is about two hours. Ooh, um, yeah, it's, it's it, that's a walk. <laughs> so we like would walk down and then take a taxi back. And, Very uh, nice. Yeah, it's good. It's good to exercise. And where we're at, a taxi is about four dollars. Um, so it, that that will probably be going up. Everything's going up a little bit. Yeah. You find re the rental prices going up. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, but not much. But uh, you can still feel a little bit. But not, it's not bad. Could be 25, 30 bucks more than normal, but not. So much. let's just give some examples. What would a two bedroom apartment close to Parquet Central, what would that run, would you say? What's um, the Can you find anything for $200 anymore? Uh, it's really difficult. It's really difficult to find something for 200 uh, close to town. And if you do find, it will be very simple, basic, and small. So I think. It'll be between 350, 300, 350 for a good apartment, two bedroom, two bathroom, uh, around town, close in the center. Now, yeah. As you go farther out, say that 40 minute walk, then then there's probably a possibility of something for 200. Um, well, based on the clients, you know, we have uh, people asking for, to have people come in and ask for where do I find or how can I find a cheap house or and it's actually really difficult uh, I haven't heard about any place for 200 actually yeah, yeah. it's been it's, a while since I've seen yeah. one on Facebook mm -hmm. so now in terms of a house what could we expect to rent a house for you know within that let's say just say 20 minute walk maybe for a hundred dollars uh, yeah now, now houses uh, good houses standard houses uh, you would find for 400 yeah <laughs> and you know sometimes they are very very nice houses big houses from 600 up so in the range between 400 505 550 you don't have many good options actually they would be like standard houses good houses but um, not the big beautiful house so Prices would go from 650, 650 up to 800 and 1,000. I have seen yeah. these kind of house, beautiful houses, yeah. really good houses. But the San Joaquin, I see San, San Joaquin, Joaquin El Latillo, yeah. I saw one in San Pedro that was 900, and I was shocked. <laughs> you know, I saw that usually, post too. You saw that post yeah. too, but you know prices are going up. Um, when we first moved here five years ago, we rented a house in. Hacienda San Joaquin, which is a gated community, and um, we, uh, we it was right at Carnival, so there wasn't any choice. Mm. It was like there's two houses around, mm. so we rented this one. It was six hundred dollars a month, and we actually did a month by month there, and um, so uh, yeah, six hundred dollars, and you know, for us coming from the states, that was a heck of a deal. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, we rented that for like two and a half months, and till we found this place. So, yeah, that was our experience, you know, mm, very short one. Now we did, I'll tell you what we did do. I, you know, I contacted the owner. He happened to be in Australia. And I said, so uh, we move out. I'm hiring a professional cleaner to come in and clean the place. Um, I didn't want us to clean it. I wanted the professional mm -hmm. cleaner. It was $14 to have someone do it. So, wow. you know, I'm, I'm sure it's gone up. But <laughs> yeah. the, the point is, is that having it professionally cleaned, um, you know, it's going to look good. It's the person that's recommended in that neighborhood to do it. And so the owner is going to most likely be yes. a lot more happy. You know, I might not see something or miss something in cleaning that a professional cleaner is going to yes. take care of. So I like that. Okay, so rentals and at 350 to 500 um, if we're an apartment, houses, you know, 400 on up to 1,000. I mean, you may even see a little more in some places, but um, 
but you could get a really nice house, you know, with some property for that kind of money, I would say. Yes. Now I have seen, you know, the houses that are like 800, 900 are very nice houses, like we, with high quality finishes. So lately we have seen more, more of these houses because people are starting to build like modern style. So I'm going to put up some pictures here um, of some houses uh, that Aura, Aura has rented um, in the past and and I'll see if I can find some um, from like Hacienda San Joaquin, just to give you an idea. Some of these are going to be very basic um, Ecuadorian style homes and the ones that are more had the European uh, features to them are going to be a little more expensive like in the El Atillo uh, neighborhood, the Hacienda San Joaquin, yes. a little bit more expensive rent because yeah, exactly. they're gated communities with a security guard. Yeah. Okay, so um, what do you think is the most popular area that expats rent in? The ones I just talked about, probably? Yeah, see, see, yeah. like Yamburara, San Joaquin. Most of the foreigners yeah. like to be in San Joaquin because it's a gated community, so. Definitely. Um, so what advice would you give to someone coming here, um, you know, for the first time and they want to rent something in Vilcabamba? What, what's the best advice you would give? Okay, after, you know, you have come to Vilcabamba, you have experienced the, the place by yourself. You know, once, that, once you find a place, it's not like you only f fell in love with the place, but, only, but also get to, to know the landlord, feel the energies because living in harmony is very very important so um i think that's that's one advice i would give you and also make sure you get a contract with um all the specifications and also be sure to be in a safe and secure place it's very important that you feel you know that you are in, in the right place and the last advice I would give is like to, to make sure how far away you want to be from town <laughs> so you don't get frustrated after you commit in a house. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can be close, like walk distance, or if you don't mind paying, like a taxi to go, 15, taxi, 15 minutes taxi drive, just be sure. <laughs> yeah. Get to know the neighborhoods a little bit first before you commit. With the house. I think that's a great plan. I, I had a friend, he's no longer living, but he lived right next to the um, uh, the municipal center. The uh, Oh. Yeah. And so, um, you know, I had some neighbors there that liked to really party. And every weekend was loud music and parties. And he would go over to tell them to turn the music down. They'd, hey, come on in. And want, they want, uh. want you to party with them. <laughs> and so the, the center right there was kind of a very noisy, busy neighborhood, a lot of dogs barking. So I think you got to be aware of that, that you know, yeah, going to be around yeah. you. Or ask the people around, you know, so you get an insight, you get an idea first. Yeah. If you're looking for, you know, really close to town and you want to you want to give up, you know, and compromise some of those things, I think. Yes. Um, that's fine. But if you're looking for complete peace and solitude, Expect a half an hour, 40 minute walk. Yes, <laughs> exactly. You know. Yeah. So I think that's a, a kind of a given here. Um, anything else you think they should know? Uh, well, I have seen people come in, exploring the area, and without knowing that they want to stay or end staying longer. So I think um, it's good that uh, once you make plans and come to the Gabamba, just expect to stay longer <laughs> because the hardest thing is to leave. <laughs> so just make your your luggage big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pack as much stuff as you can. Yes. Um, I think too, um, maybe don't come during Carnival because rentals are at a premium um, during that time of the year. Um, and so uh, you may have a hard time finding a rental like we did. Exactly, even a hotel, it's really hard because yeah. everybody wants to to rent all the hotels. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a very, very loud holiday, crazy holiday. So there's some good hosterias here in town that you could stay at for, you know, $30 a night, uh, maybe even a little less, but, 
you know, Ishkaluma, you can get a cabin for 48 or 45. So, um, so you might want to, you know, book one of those places for a week or two until Outer has some time to find you what you're looking for. And it may take a little longer. Yes, and sometimes it's really difficult to find the right place for people. They sometimes have a lot of, um, you know, considerations. They want different things, and it's really hard to locate these kind of places because most of them are already taken or, you know, they're not backhand or free. Yeah, so. I, I, depending on the time of year and what the market's like, sometimes, you know, I can look at Facebook and there's rentals all over, mm -hmm. you know, and then sometimes there's nothing. It's just depends. Exactly. It's the season. Sometimes there are a lot of rentals in, in, these, in different months, but then when we have uh, people come and ask, <laughs> you have... It's really hard to find. Not nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think um, just be flexible, you know? Exactly. And patience. <laughs> yeah. Tranquilo. Yeah. Take Jose, it easy. <laughs> Jose Abad, my taxi driver, used to say all the time, don't worry, you're in Ecuador. <laughs> Relax. Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> don't yeah. worry, be happy. Yeah. And he's right. I mean, um, they'll find you a place. Eventually, you will find the right place. Just be uh, be real patient and enjoy life. Yes, and like I always say, everything happens in the right time. So just flow, flow with the universe. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, well, I think we've covered most of the questions that people have asked. If you have more questions, um, don't hesitate to reach out to Outer directly. I'm going to put her phone number and um, her email uh, in the description box. So you can email her, you can call her on WhatsApp. If you don't have WhatsApp, you need to download it. It's a free app. And so everyone here uses WhatsApp to communicate. Yes, or yeah. Telegram. Yeah, yeah, or Telegram. Yeah, that works too. So um, I'll put all that in the description box and communicate. If you ask me questions, I'm going to tell you something that may or may not be true <laughs> because my memory is from five years ago. <laughs> and uh, and Outer is going to give you the most direct um, truest information I think that you can find. I trust this family like my own family. So um, they are Thank my you. family. They're my family. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much Thank for you, being Joe. here. You're God welcome. bless you. Thanks. Thanks and for me. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Ciao.